This series of audio recordings features selected readings from my book The Empathy Gap, Male Disadvantages and the Mechanisms of Their Neglect. In this one I read from the final chapter my summary of the empathy gap in the context of male genital mutilation. It is hateful to mutilate the genitals of girls for no valid medical purpose. In the West, very few people would demur, and certainly not those who call themselves intactivists and campaign against male genital mutilation. But our culture, in fact almost all cultures worldwide, accept mutilation of boys' genitals as if there were something natural about it. Claims of medical benefit are rationalisations which do not bear scrutiny. But for some men, if not all, circumcision causes very clear, persistent harms, particularly as regards sexual function. Indeed, the amelioration of male sexual function is the original purpose of circumcision. In what way can this be contorted into oppression of women? In the UK, MGM is almost certainly illegal under assault laws, yet it is being tolerated. It is an object lesson in how the public can be brought to accept anything so long as everyone else they know regards it as okay, even cutting body parts off babies, providing they're boy babies. How much clearer an example of a sex-based empathy gap do you want? Lord Justice Munby, former head of the family division, has ruled that MGM is a harm. The medical evidence concurs. It is remarkable, then, that a non-consensual violation of the bodily integrity of a child, which has been judicially ruled to constitute a harm, nevertheless is still to be treated as legal. This position is arrived at by rationalisations which do not bear scrutiny and which are actually for the purpose of protecting the status quo rather than the child. What facilitates this peculiar illogic is a society which will readily accept such harms to males of however tender an age, which are rightly, socially and legally intolerable if perpetrated upon females. Whilst intactivists are equally opposed to FGM, those people who are most vociferously opposed to FGM are often angered by campaigning against MGM. This curious inconsistency is made more curious by the impassioned anger of their response to intactivist campaigners. It is difficult to understand this reaction other than as a deep-seated prejudice that the spotlight of concern should never be shone upon males. Males are not the proper recipients of concern. Females must retain their monopoly on victimhood and its attendant benefits. This is feminist intensified gynocentrism and its correlate male disposability, the empathy gap. The situation in African countries is especially distressing, though I have no wish to instruct other cultures how they should behave. However, even if we must refrain from comment on coming-of-age rituals in tra traditional African cultures, there is still no excuse for Westerners treating these brutal spectacles as a tourist attraction. There is no chance that these same people would regard female genital mutilation as a suitable tourist attraction, even if the locals did, which they certainly do not. These MGM rituals and the circumcision mobs that forcibly cut men in the street in these countries cannot be simply dismissed as phenomena of the patriarchy. Anyone making such a claim will have to explain why it is that in these cultures it is just as often the women 
who insist that men are cut so as to render them fit to be our husbands. Male disposability is not specific to the West. <laughs>